Alex, please. Excuse me. Thank you, Juan. 15 minutes, perfect. Um, I apologize from the beginning. I've changed the, t the title of my talk and the subject matter slightly from the abstract, but I hope you'll find it um, more valuable. So the talk today is about ayahuasca neo-shamanism in Australia. It's based on PhD, fil PhD fieldwork undertook on uh, various locations on the east coast of the continent during 2011 to 2013. Um, Australia has a vibrant and large network of um, ayahuasca neo-shamanic practitioners that are linked in philosophy and style to global currents of ayahuasca neo-shamanism. So thus this paper offers some perspectives on the global context. Um, and I hope you'll forgive me, I'm gonna read the paper. So this talk today, in this talk today I explore ways in which the Western neo-shamanic practice of drinking ayahuasca constitutes what Ghassan Haj calls a radical political imaginary. Embedded in the practice of drinking ayahuasca in Australia are implicit forms of oppositional politics and cultural critique. Ayahuasca trans experiences and certain conceptions of illness, malaise and healing are articulated, described and explained by drinkers with discourse that includes implicit politics and critiques mounted against issues related to urbanization, materialism and consumer capitalism and that favor certain environmental and social ethics. Um, so this critical practice of ayahuasca neo-shamanism has certain similarities with the practice of, Ayaw of, of sorry, anthropology as cultural critique. Anthropologist George Marcus and Michael Fisher in the late 1980s argued that anthropology and ethnographic knowledge <coughs> excuse me, can expose and challenge normalized conceptions and institutions of Western societies. They argued that by, and I quote, using portraits of other cultural patterns to reflect self-critically on our own ways, anthropology disrupts common sense and makes us re-examine re our taken for granted assumptions. Um, as we'll see in this paper, the practice of ayahuasca neo-shamanism in Australia involves, the construct involves constructions of nature, plant spirits, and an indigenous other that become objects by which drinkers reflexively and critically assess various aspects of everyday ethics and the cultural institutions of which they are constituted. Um, as various anthropologists have noted, the use of ayahuasca by Western neo-shamanic practitioners differs considerably to its varied uses by different indigenous Amazonian peoples. Anthropologists have been quick to accuse ayahuasca neo-shamanism of romanticizing and exoticizing indigenous Amazonian shamanism. And while I don't wish to contest this, I argue that this focus on romanticism and exoticism risks obscuring the extent to which the practice of ayahuasca neo-shamanism indexes robust forms of cultural critique in which healing involves real social and cultural issues of the everyday lives of drinkers. Um, so a ayahuasca neo-shamanism draws upon conceptions of indigenous Amazonian cosmologies that, that um, differ considerably to conceptions of indigenous Amazonian social life and cosmologies described by anthropologists. Central to the, to the cosmology of ayahuasca neo-shamanism is the rarefication and personification of nature in the form of the goddesses Gaia and Mother Nature. While the notion of nature is fundamental to the practice of ayahuasca neo-shamanism, nature as a concept does not or did not exist for many animistic societies. Various anthropologists have indicated a redundancy of the binary of nature and society in terms of its application in understanding certain indigenous ontologies. Vivir de Castro notes that in perspectivist cosmologies of indigenous Amazonia, uh, where personhood may be extended to, to non-humans, what is nature to us humans may in fact be culture to non-human persons and societies. That is, in many an Amazonian cosmologies, Jaguar personhood or anaconda personhood, for example, are described as consisting of forms of culture that only appear as such to beings of the particular species, or of course to shamans and, and victims of sorcery. In ayahuasca neo-shamanism in Australia and elsewhere, the personification of nature as a total being 
in the form of Gaia and, and Mother Nature, is premised upon a Western dichotomy that involves what appears to be a Rousseauian-style valuation in which nature is placed in opposition to society. Um. Okay, now we get into the, the juicy stuff. So Australian neo-shamanic ayahuasca drinkers describe that ayahuasca can heal a myriad of illnesses and diseases and at the foundation of these maladies, they explain, is a toxic and psychic separation between the individual and nature, or the natural world. Ayahuasca ceremonies are held almost exclusively outside cities and in nature, or, or the bush, the Australian bush. And drinkers warn of the dangerous energies that may enter a ceremony conducted in city or urban settings. Ayahuasca is described as a maternal, benevolent, and intelligent plant spirit, often called uh, the medicine and la madre, or, or the, the mother, and is typically, typically described as being a conduit of Gaia or Mother Nature, or in some instances is described as uh, Mother Nature her herself. Uh, while the phenomenology of ayahuasca trance experiences include forms of purging and vomiting and sweating and, and, and visions or extrasensory modulations that, are characterized, that may be characterized by an incredible diversity of themes, one of the core experiences that drinkers in Australia describe includes types of sensory embodied and psychic merging or unity with nature, Gaia, um, and La Madre Ayahuasca. For example, Caitlin, a regular ayahuasca drinker, described, after purging I felt completely connected to all nature. Every breath, movement, small or large, felt like my own or like the I did not exist anymore. I was feeling everything all at once in a soft, gentle, and perfect way." End quote. Um, Neo-shamanic ayahuasca drinkers conceive of ayahuasca not only as a means of deeply communing with the non-human world, but as a powerful antidote to the types of morality and human action that are devastating ecological systems. For example, Darpan, a, a, a pioneering Australian ayahuasca ritual specialist, explained that, and I quote, the medicine coming from the very jungles that we are decimating at such a rapid rate is a panacea for that very sickness that can do that, that can cause so much destruction to the mother, the planet. Uh, in, similarly, Matthew, a regular ayahuasca drinker, explained to me, I quote, Aya is a plant medicine and a gift from a higher consciousness to aid humanity in our quest to awaken into the truth of what we are doing as a species, what we are doing to each other and to the planet. There is an urgency to this awakening due to our moral responsibility to future generations to not make sick and lifeless the planet that they inherit. They have a right to a healthy planet and the ceremonial consumption of ayahuasca is a powerful aid to that evolution. Now this concern of ayahuasca drinkers in Australia that society is decimating nature and the well-being of future generations is not confined to critiques of unsustainable resource extraction and anthropogenic ecological crises, but capitalism, materialism, consumerism, and various other cultural conditions and institutions are put on trial and accused of producing sickness, uh, distress, spiritual poverty, and various other maladies. Ayahuasca practice is described as a powerful intervention for healing and overcoming these maladies, as il illustrated in the, um, on the slides, the examples on the slides, um, where, sorry, consumerism and corporations are associated with illness and deception. During the, be during the beginning of 2013, a famous Peruvian vegetalismo shaman conducted a series of ceremonies across Australia. The morning after a night of drinking ayahuasca, 70 people and myself returned to the ritual space to participate in a formal question and answer time directed at the shaman, the Amazonian shaman. The ceremony he conducted the evening before was incredibly powerful. Everyone agreed. And exactly what this power is or to what ends it flows was implied in the formal discussion session held the morning after the ceremony. A participant opened the discussion asking the shaman, I quote, should we oppose or work with the current political and mainstream culture? Another question emerged, do you see corruption and toxicity finishing on earth? Now, the shaman ap appeared to me somewhat overwhelmed by these questions. The overlap and conflation of issues related to health well-being and spiritual fulfillment, uh, with concerns about global politics, environmental destruction, capitalist consumerism and materialism, 
permeated the types of questions asked to the shaman. As Evan Fertio explains, in neo-shamanic circles, ayahuasca and indigenous knowledge are conceived as, and I quote, the antithesis of Western civilization, pre-industrial, pre-modern, natural, exotic, spiritual, sacred, and traditional, end quote. Ayahuasca plant spirits and ayahuasca shamans are associated with nature, polarized in a way in which broad aspects of society and culture become open to critique. The visiting Amazonian shaman reaffirmed or spoke to these perceptions um, of being connected to nature by telling a story to everyone about his history of training and initiation with, Amazon with indigenous shamans, and I quote, deep, deep, deep in the jungle. This notion of a depth of relationship with nature is met by neo-shamanic ayahuasca drinkers with a depth of expectation of abilities to heal and critique society. Now, I'm, I'm going to have to just really quickly race through this slide, despite the fact that it deserves a, a whole kind of talk in its own right. Australian ayahuasca drinkers describe that their practice involves healing distress related to social life, that is, related to, um, to relationships with loved ones, family members, friends, work colleagues, and others, um, as illustri illustrated in the examples on the slide. Drinkers describe that healing takes place through the purging out of trauma, past experiences, or psychic substances, and through having epiphanies and visions of psychic connections with, with significant others and nature or, or the cosmos. The practice of ayahuasca neo-shamanism includes relational modes of selfhood in which drinkers reconstitute their social relations during ecstatic trance experiences. A lexicon of terms that drinkers use to describe the incredibly profound sensory exper experiences of drinking ayahuasca are extended to descriptions of the relational modes of se selfhood that ayahuasca is said to occasion. These include, and I quote, high vibrational and high frequency relations, fractal connections, and primary heart-centered relations. The plant spirit La Madre Ayahuasca is conceived as, a heal as healing ruptures that exist between ayahuasca drinkers and their significant others, at the same time as healing a more fundamental rupture between the individual and nature. There is a structural resemblance between the overcoming of forms of interpersonal alienation with the overcoming of natural alienation. Um, now finally, just to wrap it up, by by crudely comparing the etiological and healing systems of ayahuasca neo-shamanism with forms of Amazonian shamanism, the extent to which ayahuasca neo-shamanism is characterized by broad forms of cultural critique becomes apparent. Um, sorcery is central to practices of healing in Amazonian societies, yet it is typically absent from the practice, totally absent from the practice of ayahuasca neo-shamanism in Australia. Neo-shamanic Ayahuasca drinkers do not associate moral failings, sickness, malaise, and bad fortune to psychic attacks from sorcerers, animal spirits, neighbors, or kin, such as has been documented in indigenous Amazonia, but to an alienation from nature, to urbanization, to materialism, to consumer capitalism, and other cultural entities that become sites of critique. Ayahuasca retreats in Australia provide drinkers with a reflexive and social vantage point that is outside society and in nature. By momentarily stepping outside society, everyday life, and regular consciousness, the everyday is thrown into view, reconstituted, and rearticulated. This practice of ayahuasca neo-shamanism, uh, as, as we have seen, thus involves the construction of a radical political imaginary that appears in the cracks of modernity with particular prescriptions of remedy and well-being linked to constructions of indigenous Amazonian shamanism and a sentient natural world. Bruno Latour notes that neo-pagan constructions of Gaia and Mother Nature have been criticized for being nostalgic, romantic, and a reinvention of an exotic cult that never existed. Ayahuasca neo-shamanism is undoubtedly vulnerable to similar criticisms. And these criticisms, I argue, risk obscuring and silencing the real social and cultural issues that motivate people in Australia and other Western contexts to seek healing and wisdom from ayahuasca. I'll finish there. Thank you.